So, my name is Alexandra Henry Code. I am a, a happy researcher, scientist, geneticist, and I've been in the field for poof, so many years I don't want to count, but let's say since uh, heavily in the lab uh, since uh, 1992. Uh, so, those who want to count, count. I won't. <laughs> Uh, but just to say that I have quite some experience, I was uh, um, lucky as to get a tenure position in uh, France, in our uh, French, the equivalent of the NIH, uh, which is called the INSUM. Uh, I did my postdoctorate in the United States uh, uh, at uh, Harvard uh, Medical School. And uh, basically what I've been, you know, trying to um, understand for the, my career was really how can a gene be turned on and uh, how, how, how do we get some kind of control on genes. And because of that I got uh, for the last let's say 15 years involved with in the RNA world and the RNA world gets you a step further than the DNA uh, and uh, it's a very interesting step because it's a step of a lot of complexity of interaction. Uh, right now this, uh, the situation is that um, the health system is sick, uh, broadly sick, widely sick. Uh, why do I say that? Because um, so the system is sick because I will just quote the definition of health by uh, the World Health Organization. Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This is just the reason why our system is sick, because we are not addressing this definition. We are not promoting solutions to reach a complete physical, mental and social well-being in the people. We are merely <laughs> check, uh, going after the absence of a disease, of an infirmity, and this is wrong. Not even the absence of an infirmity, because we take the risk that some products such as uh, the injection, will lead to some infirmity <laughs> and yet not arresting the administration of this injection. I think this is quite uh, obvious to me that the system is not right at the moment. So uh, we are going through um, um, quite of a crisis <laughs> in our society uh, and uh, in fact, I think I somewhat anticipated what is going on at the moment in the sense that I thought it was high time we changed a bit gears uh, in the way we conducted uh, our research uh, towards health, uh, meaning that uh, I, was, uh, I wanted to reorientate my research into being in the capacity of working on simple solution, low cost, durable and ethical. Those keywords that I just mentioned, simple, durable, low cost and ethical, are not so easy to reach. And this has been my, uh, my aim uh, for the last uh, uh, years, uh, five years or so. And so it's um, when this whole crisis arrived, I have to say that I had some, somewhat anticipated that things were not going in the right direction. So how did I do that? Not that I am uh, anything of a, uh, a guru who looks at a crystal uh, ball and say, oh, it's going to be, go bad. No, the, 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 we had had signs that uh, we were not going in the right direction, especially in genetics, with this uh, uh, with this uh, drug that was developed and put in onto the market at two million uh, euros per injection <laughs> for uh, gene therapy. When we reached the state stage of two million euros, it was really there was a real real bridge in my mind. Like I have not been doing putting all this energy into science, into academic science, for the system to be developing, to be in the capacity of accepting, to put on the market 
a drug at 2 million euros per injection again. So, uh, and uh, this was a drug from Novartis uh, called Zogesma. Uh, and so, yeah, the, then I sort of, you know, realized that things were not right and that we needed to go back to solutions. And uh, I was struck by the fact that uh, the World Health Organization uh, states that uh, about it's estimated their estimation that 80% of the popula worldwide population uh, rely on uh, traditional herbal medicine to cure themselves. And I found it a good uh, approach as to saying, okay, in this traditional herbal medicine has the modern medicine applied have we do we have you know good uh, um, uh, guidelines uh, so that it doesn't become toxic for them or and i realized that no so so some people would be harmed by the her herb med herbal medicine but some won't uh, so yeah, yeah there was a great uh, imbalance there and i really liked this idea of, of uh, um, going to that direction that's why i, I built my own institute which is called Simplicima Institute, Research Institute, to be in the capacity of going further. I feel I've, I feel I'm quite unlucky. <laughs> I feel I'm unlucky because I, I got into a story um, that turned me into a public person, which I never anticipated and which I did not want to happen because otherwise I wouldn't have been a scientist. Like scientists, they know that they are hidden in their laboratory and that <laughs> the, it is actually a very comfortable place to be uh, because you are somewhat hidden. And, uh, and the thing is that because of my expertise on RNA, there were things that uh, were being said that I couldn't let be said without uttering a voice. And I, the, the part that I was unlucky is that my words got a, a big amplification, which is that um, it got viral, as we say, and, uh, and that therefore I became a public person. <laughs> so that's why I say I'm a very unlucky one. <laughs> uh, now, um, now it's um, a responsibility to be forefront, uh, to be uh, launched into the forefront position because you want to be extremely balanced, uh, reasonable, Whatever I say, I have to put even more uh, uh, thoughts as to the fact that it needs to be sourced. It needs to be, uh, the, the people need to be in the capacity of checking whatever I say. And this is very important for me uh, because I, my, the reason why I spoke up was not because I wanted to influence or to, I just wanted to share. I have a passion for my, my, uh, my job. I have a passion for what uh, science and what we discover. I like to share that with the public. For instance, a man like um, a scientist like uh, Anthony Fauci uh, has uh, put some work together where he was showing, uh, giving the evidence that if there was a pandemic, uh, it was always important to have antibiotics to treat uh, any sort of pandemic, even if it was a, a viral. Uh, he put some evidence that a, a number of drugs could be uh, could have an interest into curing people, such as hydroxychloroquine. And uh, basically, what uh, I've heard from him lately was the contrary of what he's papers were about, his publications were about, and his demonstration were about, and other, other people's demonstration. And this is um, just to show you that there is a problem. You know, it's like, uh, and I see another twist as to uh, the, the, now the, the CEO of, uh, of uh, Pfizer, uh, who jumped into the, 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 this adventure of delivering all individuals on earth with an mRNA injection 
although he was he claims um, not so long ago in March March 10th uh, in the Washington Post he was claiming that he was extremely surprised that uh, scientists came up with this idea of developing an mRNA injection because he knew that the science was not very advanced in that field in the sense that there had never been a product developed and put on the market with mRNA injection, never, even for like a, a disease, severe disease. And he also knew that Pfizer was not very advanced because it was not uh, their priority, uh, that kind of injection, because there was so many difficulties. So he knew all that. And so, so that's why I see another twist, exactly the same than, than Fauci. So it's like, in other words, there is this past and there is this disruption where suddenly their attitude and, their, and all they do is completely pivot, pivotal to, um, to, uh, to what they have been claiming. Uh, I hope I am not, uh, I don't uh, exhibit that same twist because I believe that uh, RNA um, device, RNA based uh, uh, medicine can be in the long run a solution, but I just know that we are not to this stage yet and injecting the people, healthy people with RNA was just a very dangerous thing to do because you do not know what you're doing and you have only questions but no answers because we haven't come to the, the position where we have answers to the number of questions we are asking. Just to, to, sticking to the definition, I think that uh, the, the system is not right to, um, for addressing the, the well-being of the people. And, uh, and of course, I mean, it has been a long system where we have settled uh, down little by little in this uh, whole uh, cartoon. Uh, so I don't like this, you know, conspirationists who will tell you this is because of uh, this guy or this is because of this company because basically what happened is that little by little we got settled in the situation that uh, we got, we industrialized the process of research. And we, by doing so, we put the industrial uh, uh, pressure of outcome, measurable outcome, on science, which I find inappropriate because research has to be a gain of knowledge uh, and hopefully with the capacity of applying it to people, but not solely. And with this shift in the mentality, we became some kind of, um, yeah, an, in, an institution, uh, research was institutionalized uh, as a government um, politic, one arm of their politics, and therefore governments would decide that they would plan, make a planification against cancer or a planification against COVID, and this is not right because it has to be the, um, the, 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 the maturation of the, the technological tools, the, 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 the apparatus, the, the mindset of the researchers to come across the fields that they can attack and, and basically uh, let them the freedom of doing this science. We built academic science to let that freedom happen, and for long it did work, but because it was academic science, it became the government tool, and there have been a shift into political measures. And that's what we've seen for the last two years. We did not see scientific measures that we had little by little see as being efficient, such as putting people in their, locking them in their home. This is nothing of a science, a scientific experiment. And yet this is what happen, happened. And so they call it lockdown. I call it home jailing. We have been home jailed. Uh, so it's, I think it's better to, 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 to be using the right words that, that make us rem understand what we are, have been going through. I think I'm good at um, 
doing research as a, as a scientist I'm because the reason why I know that is because what I discovered with my team discovered is being used by the community uh, broadly so um, I I think it's good to know what you are good at and that what you are not good at I'm not I would not know whether you can fix the system or you have to rebuild the system. I tend to think that a rebuilding is under a revolutionary um, sort of perspective where you have to destroy so much and to get so much. I mean, I'm based on, based on the French Revolution. It's not something that I wish to happen for any country because it was bloody, because it has to, it took off a great number of lives, uh, even of children. And I don't, I never find it right for no matter what reason. And so I, I'm, I would say that philosophically, I'm more of those people who prefer to try to fix whatever is not, not great, but you know, that's the way it is, because I don't believe in perfection. I just know who I am. I know I'm very an imperfect. And um, and what can I do? I, I, I will try to fix myself, and I will try to fix other people as well. Uh, and I think we have to adjust to the fact that we are not uh, great uh, people, and so we will sort of, you know, try to aim at a good thing. What I've been doing in my institute, the way I addressed this issue was to say that we need to promote a One Health uh, uh, issue. And One Health issue is about saying that whenever you propose a solution uh, for a disease, for instance, you have to think it globally, meaning you have to understand where you get the sourcing typically of a plant. You have to understand that you are not ruining the whole balance uh, between the plants uh, in order to produce that plant. Uh, you have to understand that, you know, it, the animals don't get sick maybe uh, because of that plant. You know, it's a, it's a one health issue. And one health is about life. And life, we share it with uh, plants and we share it with animals. We share it as well with bacteria. So if you want to aim at something, just give yourself the chance to proof your idea in the total cycle of life. I'm not saying that it will be perfect again, but you may g resolve a great number of things. And uh, I mentioned in my presentation uh, that, um, you know, uh, that we were discussing between scientists and, and medical doctors as to uh, how we could bring back uh, ethics, uh, uh, ethical conduct, and uh, and the fact that uh, publication lately have been of very very bad quality, meaning that fake things have been published, even in Lancet or e even in the journals that we thought were just like the the top of the 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 quality that we we had, and uh, and I said. You don't need, again, you probably don't need to fix the whole system because I can't. So what I did for a couple of years is that I was asking my students to behave in a way that, uh, to have an ethical conduct that they would think that they have a responsibility to answer in front of history that they did not do anything wrong and that they did not harm the society in any ways. And this is very important to, to bear in mind that maybe uh, in the history, just like happened in the Nuremberg trial, there will be a penal uh, international court that can go after scientists to ask them about on their action. And I just the fact of, of thinking that it can exist makes you realize that you are you have a strong responsibility in the society and that you should be careful and think it twice before you do everything anything you do